All right, the 1176, I'm sure you're here because you want to learn more about it, how to use it on your vocals. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how. Firstly, check out all of the links in the description if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. Be free to send me your projects, I'll check them out, we'll talk about it. If you wanna learn more about recording techniques, you know the kind of secrets to good mic technique, check all of that in the description. If you are looking for mastering, you can check out Lander. Lander is a fully automated mastering service. You can get all of your mixes brought up to an industry standard, so check that out. But nonetheless, let's hop straight into it. So the good old 1176. I mean, my belief is always if you want to know if something is good, see how long it lasts, right? The 1176 has been around since the 60s. Let's quickly just uh, double check that since the 60s, man, you know, designed by Bill Putman, who was the founder of Universal Audio. So many famous records have been either recorded or mixed through one of these 1176s. Um, the hardware you know, shooting up in value, especially the vintage units. This is the Revision A, which is one of the first um, versions of the 1176 going for about $15,000 on a good day. So as you can see, these um, are just becoming really rare. A lot of engineers and famous studios want them. I myself have a Revision H, which is the silver face, which I think sounds really cool. And you know, it works for me. It's a great piece of gear. So I really want to you know, introduce you to the world of the 1176 because there's a reason why everyone wants one. There's a reason why everyone is using them still today, right? And, um, you know, if you can learn something about that, then it'll be um, job well done on my end, right? I'll be able to give you that. So let's get straight into it. Firstly, before we run through the layout of the 1176, let's talk about the sound of it, right? Now, there's something very unique about the 1176, um, both from the workflow perspective and then both from the sound of what's going on within it, right? Now, when we look at the 1176, it is a, you know, class A amplifier and it has in an uh, input and output transformers, meaning that, you know, when you hit the 1176, you're getting saturation. When you leave the 1176, you're getting saturation. So you're getting this wonderful sound, okay? Mix that together with the attack and release, which we'll talk about, and you really have this really cool device that you can either use to just compress, right, have it sound clean, or you can really tone your vocal. This is why it sounds so good on vocals, is you can really, you know, just by using the attack and release, adjust the way that the vocal is either more warm and rounded or more snappy and fast and distorted, right? We can get all of that um, using this plugin. So, you know, with that aside, that's kind of work from left to right, right? So when we get the 1176, or when we open one up, and again, you don't have to use the Universal Audio one, the Waves one sounds great, the IK Multimedia one sounds great, I'm sure there are a few free ones out there that also sound great. Okay, me personally, I'm gonna use the Universal Audio card that I purchased a while ago, so, you know, this was included, um, actually I purchased this additionally, but, you know, it sounds good. So, you know, when we pull up this plugin, the first thing that I'm doing is manipulating the input and output, right? Because I want to make sure that I'm not hitting this plugin too hard. The last thing I want to do is over compress, make things sound too different from what they originally sounded like. I really want this piece of gear to do two things, as I said, you know, shape my sound and then just do a little bit of glue compression, right? That for me is, is a win, right? So I do that by simply adjusting the input and then reducing the output or maybe, you know, adjusting the output to be louder, right? But you know, firstly, I'm always just gonna make sure I'm not really compressing. My style is really not to compress fully. Some mixes, I have done mixes for clients where I've just completely crushed the 1176 and it sounds really good. It just flattens the vocal. You go into a whole different world. You know, no other plugin can do that. But you know, just on an everyday, you know, you've received a mix or maybe you're ready to mix your record. Start off with these settings, see what they sound like, right? So I'll just play this track real quick. And I want you to see how much I'm compressing. And then you're gonna see, you know, why these settings have been chosen. So as you can see right there, every time, you know, the, the mostly at the end of each line, there's a bit of a loudness to it, right? Now. This 1176 simply steps in and says, oh, that's a bit too loud, let's drop that in volume. But guess what? Your ear can't really hear that the volume has changed in any way. And that's kind of the magic of compression in general, right? But, you know, that's what I'm doing. I want that flavor, right? If I was to turn this off, will you hear a difference? You'll probably hear a little bit less kind of fullness in the vocal. You wanna show with me all night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the west side, just cooling out with a bad girl. She hanging out, stay though, but I'm 
sober Switch the AMG for the Rover Ready thought it was over Right, A, we get a bit of volume, but B, we're getting a little bit more sizzle out of the vocal. We're getting a bit more warmness out of the vocal, and that's really what we achieve, right? So once you've set your input and output levels, if you want to squash your vocal, go for it, you know, drive it up, right? Some people like it dirty and then simply turn down the output. I'm really going to adjust it depending on what the, um, you know, how loud the vocal is, right? And so once you've set that, then it's really time to then set the attack and release. Now, for those who don't know, the weirdness to the 1176 i like to think about it as if it was a car right um you would assume that one would mean fast attack but it doesn't one actually means really slow for both the attack and release so i like to think about it as a car if you're driving 10 miles an hour you're going quite slow right if you're driving 70 miles an hour you're going quite fast right so think about it in that way and you know you'll be able to adjust right so again what's the importance of, of adjusting the attack and release well this compressor begins to act differently, right? Completely differently the more you adjust these values, right? If you've got a really slow attack, it becomes more gluey and tubby and warm and slow, right? Maybe you want that for more ballad style vocal. Maybe your song is really full and you want that vocal to just sit. You know what I mean? You can have a really nice slow attack. I wish I could uh, copy these values. I'll just see if I can just slow the attack down. You wanna show with me all night. On the west side, just cooling out with a bad girl and she hanging out. Stay though, but I'm sober. Switch the AMG for the rover. Really thought it was over, but you know I'm a soldier. Right, so the vocals almost become a bit more conservative, right? It's not really as, as grabby, it's not really as distorted, it's more so slow and moving, and it's not really, you know, can't really hear it as much, right? But if I was to speed this up, you wanna show with me all night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the west side, just cooling out with a bad girl, and she hanging out. Stay dumb, but I'm sober. Switch the AMG for the rover. Really thought it was over, but you know I'm a soldier. Right, you begin to really hear the compressor. It's really like, da, you know, da. Done, and it's a bit too fast. So you'd have to adjust the release as well. Um, but because of my undo settings, I can't really do much here, you know. But same thing applies for the release, right? If I was to slow down the release, every time we would compress the vocal, all the other words after that line would also be reduced in volume. Now that's a bit of a problem at times, right? So you really want to set that release based on how fast the song is and how fast the lyrics are being uh, sung or rapped or whatever it is, right? So I'll just do the same. You wanna show with me all night? Yeah, yeah. That's cool, we are losing quite a bit of volume. Again, you would then have to adjust the output if you really wanted to have that slow release. But if you want that super fast release, we're actually going to get a bit more distortion, right? Compressors, for some reason, just distort when the release is faster because you're kind of confusing it in a way, right? Right, really nice and fast. The ends of each word, it's, 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 it's a bit more sibilance because it's popping back, right? So hopefully you get the idea. You know, you really just want to figure out what you like. A good starting point would be three and five. That has always been a traditional setting to start with. So if you're mixing your vocals, you know, adjust the input and output, three, five on the attack and release, and then simply four, okay, on the ratio. So, you know, let's move on to the ratio now, right? Now, when it comes to the ratios of the 1176, it actually, again, changes the characteristic of the compressor. Okay, now why do I have my ratio set to eight, right? Firstly, we've got four, eight, 12, and 20, but we also are able to, um, you know, choose mixtures of settings i can actually do that on mine so i'm actually just going to turn mine to 20 and 4 so that's actually a ratio of 24 and uh that's on my mic right so we can do that but i've just got it set to 4. we can also set it to for example if you want to see what's happening on the screen um there you go right we could have you know 20 12 and 8. now if you did the math that would add up to a total of what um 40 right because we've got 12 plus 8 which is 20 plus 20 we've got a ratio of 40 to 1. so it's pretty insane right we can do all of those things um but you know different values create different results right so for example 8 plus 4 would equal 12 but if we mix these two together we actually affect the compressor in an interesting way so again i'm not going to go through every single style but have fun messing around with the different flavors sadly not every um company are going to have the ability to adjust everything but most will have what the what everyone calls the all buttons in mode i'll actually try that on my compressor real quick so 
So right there, I'm now speaking with the all buttons in mode. I don't know how much that's compressing, but you know, there you go. All buttons in mode would simply look like this. Every button has been um, pushed inwards and we get strange things that happen to the vocal. Generally, people use them for compressing drums and making things sound like they're exploding. It's really cool. But again, you know, that's pretty much the magic of the 1176. There's really no more to it other than you putting this onto your mix and just having fun, right? Now, where do I like to place the 1176? Either on the main vocal itself, I like to do it just like this, conservative settings, just doing a little bit of tucking in. Um, you know, I might add two, maybe I'll even add a LA2A and then an 1176, maybe an uh, 1176 and then an LA2A, right? I can mix things up, you know, so I'm doing something similar to that in this mix right here. 1176 running into an opto style compressor, which is essentially like an LA2A, just to glue the vocal, right? So if I just go into the song, right you know it's doing its thing right it's just really gluing the vocal together um you know you could add this on your background vocals and just absolutely distort it let's see if i do have um uh, let's just pull up you know just a simple legacy one right so for example we've got these background vocals that pop into the mix let's just solo them out We'll listen to it without the 1176. So there you go. Let's turn that on. Well, my bad. Let's just enable this right here. Go back to the beginning. All friends done switched up. Been grinding, can't give up. I can't change, I stay the same. Rock star like Kirk or Bang. Right. If we put in all buttons in. All friends done switched up. Been grinding, can't give up. I can't change, I stay the same. Rock star like Kirk or Bang. Right, and if we start adjusting the attack and release, let's make everything really fast, right? Fast attack and release. All friends done switched up, been grinding, can't give up. I can't change, I stay the same. Rock star like Kirk Cobain. Right, sounds a lot different if we just had a more conservative settings, right? All friends done switched up, been grinding, can't give up. I can't change, I stay the same. Rock star like Kirk Cobain. Right, we can just manipulate for days, but at the end of the day, man, find what you like. Find what works and um, you know enjoy the beauty of the 1176 man if you can get into using this um, you're just gonna have so much fun using it it is, it is a pro tool there's a, a tool that is always going to be used in every studio until the end of time in my um, humble opinion you know i feel sorry really for you know people in like 400 years where these might not be around anymore you know so get your hands on one if you can waves um, warm audio do make you know newer versions of them um, the originals have a certain flavor, um, you know, mix and match, see what you like, but uh, keep mixing every day. Hopefully you learn something from this video. Uh, again, check all the links in the description. I'll check out the next one. Peace out.